So in 1934, the movie Tomorrow's Children comes out. Um, it's one of our main secondary sources for this podcast, and it was a film that was basically an anti-sterilization film, um, and it was not supported by the Motion Picture Association of America. Um, and basically what the MPA does is they censor it throughout the entire country. So that means that this movie, um, being censored, loses a ton of profit. It's not shown to the mass media. It doesn't get any funding from some of these Hollywood unions. It doesn't get to um, really compete in any major award shows like the Oscars because uh, the MPA had a monopoly over that industry. So censoring that film um, really tanks its profits. Um, and to give a little bit of historical context between the public opinion of America at the time, in 1927, in the, uh, the first forced sterilization case the Supreme Court gets in Buck v. Bell, the United States uh, Supreme Court, uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, one of the justices, writes, society can prevent those who are manifestly unfit from continuing their kind. So it's interesting to note that this quote would later be used against the United States in the uh, Nuremberg trials. Um, and it uh, shows the public opinion of the time. There was obviously a eugenics thought process that was going through America um, because as the supreme law of the land um, gives states rights to force sterilization you can make that uh, inference. So the film itself covers uh, a woman who's, um, who's adopted by a family who is seen as unfit to uh, reproduce. And basically, because she's adopted, um, the family is given um, an ultimatum by the government that if they want to continue uh, to collect their welfare checks because they're a family in poverty, um, they need to completely sterilize their entire family so that um, their poverty or their financial burden does continue to future generations. Um, but because she's adopted, there's a lot of skepticism and the family continues to try to make her um, become sterilized. Uh, and the film kind of, uh, it, it really challenges that idea um, and it gives a little bit of a, a cryptic message there. Um, but it, it's interesting to note for the MPA that they censored the movie throughout all of America. The movie, because it was already pr produced, um, actually had to go through state censorship, uh, meaning that they had to go through specific state governments to allow the movie to be played, meaning that states were allowed to censor uh, whatever happened in the movie, and they were allowed to basically pick what audience that they would choose. Um, and only Ohio and Pennsylvania allowed for the censorship to pass, um, which are both very um, liberal slash free states at the time. Um, but on the contrary, uh, it shows a significant swing in American culture. Um, they can be paralleled to VKC's retroactive view on eugenics through the Nuremberg trials. Um, and basically what it's saying is nobody was innocent. It only passed through two states out of 50 states in all of America. So there was significant eugenics thinking in all of America. Um, this is just one movie that we looked into that we saw, and it's actually a terrific movie. I really suggest that you go watch it, but another movie or a documentary series that we really suggest that you go look at is Eugenics Crusade, which is a PBS documentary. Um, it actually includes the above movie, um, but it, it, you can look into it a lot more. It, it has a huge section on uh, the Chicano movement and Madrigan versus Quilligan, which you'll hear about very soon. Um, and it has a lot of uh, really good historical precedent and a lot of good legal context. So.